to ensure that you stop the drive, he'll simply shoot a wide open shot. There's the dilemma. Now, here's the answer, and it's all in technique. First, sprint until you're within one stride of reaching him. Then, chop your steps in order to bring your body and base under control. While shortening your steps, throw up your lead hand to discourage the shot. But don't raise your torso and lose your stance and balance. Keep your bump down low. You'll have a low center of gravity and be able to change directions in case he drives. When your opponent is going to shoot near the basket, especially a quick shot, your goal should be to make him miss without fouling and to get the rebound or at least prevent him from an easy putback. The technique to change a shot is easy. Shoot both hands up so your arms are vertical and form a wall. Hopefully you'll hinder his vision or make him shoot a little bit higher than normal. But at the very least, you've shown the officials your hands and that you have a fundamentally sound position and that you're trying not to foul. But that's only half the technique. I've seen players form the wall, make their man shoot short, only to miss the rebound and let the shooter slip by for a putback. That's why I call it the wall and block. You must create the habit of changing the shot and then quickly stepping through into a block out ready to rebound. What if you've played perfect defense and cut off your opponent's drive, but he doesn't stop? He's determined to drive through you, or maybe he can't stop. Possibly he thinks he can slip by you at the last second. Or perhaps he thinks you'll just get out of his way. Regardless of the reason he keeps coming, you have to take the charge if you're going to be a top-notch defender. To take a charge without getting called for a blocking foul, you must be squarely in the path of your opponent. And the key to getting the charge call is for both of your feet to be on the ground before you draw contact. Drawing a charge is tricky because you've got to minimize your chances of getting hurt while maximizing your chances of getting the call. We can address both of these at the same time. As your man starts to barrel into you, have your weight or center of gravity on your heels. Let your torso straighten a bit, but keep your bump out and your knees bent in an athletic position. This will put your head behind the line of your knees, and as we said earlier, this will affect your balance and make it easier to knock you down. Now, there are different ways you can use your hands and arms to protect yourself. But I favor holding one arm up and one arm down. This allows you to protect your groin, midsection, and face all at the same time. Knowing you are protected keeps you from turning your head. Because if you do, your head will turn your torso and the official won't make the call. In fact, he'll change the call to a block on you. If you try to hold your ground when you get hit by a player moving at full speed, you're asking to get hurt. Instead, time his contact with your weight going backwards and get a little air under your feet. Being an inch off the ground helps to absorb the blow. Tuck your chin to your chest to protect the back of your head from hitting the floor. Fall on your bump, slap the floor with your palms, and slide backwards. This helps spread the impact. It also ensures that you don't break your fall with your hands first. If you do this, you could break your wrist. And hey, a little acting goes a long way. Let the air be forced out of you at the point of contact with a loud <laughs> And defense is over. But if you're up against a quality opponent whom you can't take the ball from, then just take away his best option. Force him to use his weak hand or force him to a bad area. But what if you can't dictate what you want him to do? Then at least influence him. And if you're up against Jordan and you can't influence him, then at least stay between him and the goal. My point here is control. You must control the offensive player to whatever extent you can. The following four chapters are not about how to dominate a player that you're athletically superior to. Rather, we're going to prepare you for defending the best players 
taking your defensive game to the next level. Defending the dribbler one-on-one -on -one in the open court is the first step to becoming a feared defender. Hey, his team can't score if he can't get the ball past half court. Wouldn't it be nice to have a one-step lead if you were in a foot race? Well, that's what an overplay is. You can overplay the direction your man is heading and get that one-step advantage by pointing to the ball with your lead hand. If the ball handler changes direction, change your lead hand and foot. And since you're pointing at the ball, this will force you to quickly overplay it in the other direction. Don't let your man square himself to the go. There are too many options, too many fakes available for him. If you allow him to square himself to you, he can explode into a speed dribble and school you. So keep a closer gap and put him into a power dribble stance. He'll be slower and have fewer options to beat you. Angle the dribbler to an out-of-bounds line. Then as he approaches it, Speed up to cut off any opportunity for him to slip by. Use the out-of-bounds line as another defender. Think one-man trap. When he picks up the ball, go body to body with him. If possible, straddle his pivot foot and leg and trace the ball with both hands 